What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. I have to say, I was not too excited to test uh, this lineup. Uh, you know, the review out there was not so great uh, and this is probably like another plus uh, in the 14 nanometer saga and so on. But uh, after some testing, uh, let's say that I discovered some uh, features, some aspect of this generation that deserve to be told. So without any further ado, let's get straight to the point. All right, so here we have the 11400, the 11600K, and Triketot memory. Uh, I used the Triketot memory to have uh, like a baseline with the ballistic 3600 C16, a very nice kit uh, that can be found around 80 or 90 euro or dollars. There's also the 3200 MHz, but it's like uh, five to 10 bucks less. Uh, so this is a, a better one. The Viper Steel uh, 4400 MHz uh, C19. This is another very nice kit. It's a B die kit that can be found around 120 euro or dollars. And then the Team Group uh, Team Extreme ARGB that is rated 3600 MHz C14. This is, is a very well being B die kit. And if you are lucky enough, you can find it around 170, 180 euro or dollars that is more or less at par with uh, the best uh, Trident uh, Z, uh, like uh, the 4600 MHz uh, C18. So it's a very nice kit, well binned. The problem is that it is a bit hard to find, but well, we have three kits, the cheaper one, a mid-range one, and the very expensive one. You will see that in the benchmark. As the baseline for the Intel CPU, I'm using the Z, uh, 590i, the MSI Unify, that is a very nice uh, motherboard that uh, I will put in my World of Warcraft build as my recording studio, but uh, uh, you will see that in a separate video. So uh, now let's start uh, with the benchmarks. Let's start uh, with uh, the simple chart. At the bottom, you can see the 10600K versus the 11600K with the ballistic kit uh, set uh, to XMP. I know, it's not impressive like at all. 5 FPS less than what should be a newer product, it's kind of weird. But uh, with the memory overclocked to 4400 MHz and an easy sub-timing setup, the 11th gen showed a small advantage. And that made me thinking that there's more in the picture to discover. Now, take a look of how the 10600K behave with memory and overclocking. The scaling is linear. The better the memory tuning, better the outcome especially if I overclock also the CPU and the ring. The number 47 in the description is the cache multiplier that is very important to improve the memory latency. If you pick the two best and worst, there's a 20% difference, which is nice, but we are talking about a memory kit that is priced around 80, 90 euros or dollars versus a kit that can cost double or even much more than that. And here's the chart you need to pay attention to. With the 11th generation, we have now a memory system very similar to the one of Zen 2 and Zen 3 that is called Gear 1 and Gear 2. We can unlink the memory and by doing so, we can reach even higher frequency than the previous generation. Running at 4600 MHz was the limit with the 10600K. Now my limit is the RAM quality. The CPU can easily pass 5 GHz on the memory with an expensive kit. but even so, going unlinked comes with a latency penalty that is hardly covered by the extra frequency. In fact, the lower speed of Gear 1 is still performing better than a very high tuned Gear 2. And this is a great thing for the wallet. It means that you can use a less expensive kit to be able to use these settings. A kit like the Viper Steel 4400. But there's a catch. Like for the fabric speed of the Ryzen's, it's not easy to reach uh, speed above the official supported memory frequency. In my case, with a tight sub-timing setup, I hit a wall at uh, 3333 MHz. I was able to use uh, 3466 MHz only with an XMP profile that uh, have loose sub-timing, and so not so fast. If we take a step further with the overclocking of the CPU and the ring, as you can see, we have almost another 10% of gain. I found very easy to reach 5 GHz and 44 ring. I got this only by changing the multipliers and applying a little offset to the V-Core. I was also able to do the benchmark at 5.2 all core with two cores set to 5.4. But this was using a voltage that is not safe for daily 
and I saw that World of Warcraft is not triggering the two core boost. This is something I will test more in the future. Maybe there's something more to take here and with the right settings, but uh, uh, also over five gigahertz, uh, we start having other bottlenecks elsewhere. So the gains are very minimal uh, versus the effort. As you can see at the top of the chart, uh, we have uh, now the competition, the Ryzen 5 5600X. Uh, that is 2 FPS faster on the average, but definitely is lower with the 1% and 0.1% lows. Also, it costs like 70 more, so uh, to me it doesn't look like a real win here. And now let's talk about the smaller brother, the 11400. I will spare you all the unnecessary charts uh, and get right to the point. Uh, Gear 1, once again, is a must. Uh, a well-tuned 11400 can even beat a uh, 11600K with the wrong memory setup by like 10%. It's quite impressive. The previous generation, even with memory pushed to the limit, can't keep up with nearly a 10% gap. If you compare by price, the Ryzen 3600, that have now a street price even a bit higher, is far behind. Here is all the tests I have done for this video, and all the lines were tested at least three or four times to have a more cleaner result. It took me quite some time. Anyway, I won't comment on this. Uh, I think it's quite clear the point by now. And this is the last but very important part of this video. In red, you can see the average frame rate and the other value is the sum of the street price of the CPU plus the memory kit used, calculated with 90 euro for the ballistic kit, 120 for the Viper Steel uh, 4400, used mainly for Ryzen and the Gear 1 lines, 170 for the team group, that is also very hard to find around, a kit capable to reach uh, 4600 C17 tight sub timings can cost you even more than 300 euros or dollars. Now, in purple is what uh, I can recommend you if you look uh, to buy uh, some components or if you want to refresh uh, your PC. From the top, we have the Ryzen 5800X, that is the actual top performer, especially with paired with the Viper Steel 4400, uh, followed by the 5600X. And the good part of going with AMD is that you don't need to touch uh, the CPU overclock. Uh, the default boost algorithm is unbeatable, and you just need to tune the memory. Then we have the 11600K, uh, better if overclocked and paired with a good kit of BDI. Uh, tuned to gear 1 and tight timings. For a lower budget, uh, we have the 10600K that is still a very good deal, especially if you've overclocked and uh, if you want to choose the F version being even a bit cheaper. Also, the 11400 can be a nice option if you don't want or you don't care about overclocking. All right, guys, so in conclusion, uh, the best thing that I see with this generation is that uh, the gear 1 have the best uh, performance and uh, to have uh, a good gear one setup uh, you don't need to buy an expensive memory kit uh, you just need like uh, the viper steel or some uh, decent b die that uh, i will try to find some cheap kit uh, with a cheap motherboard and do some guide and tutorials uh, how to do it to make it easier for you uh, something that uh, we need to take in consideration that amd can run uh, uh, properly on cheaper boards so the board for intel are slightly more expensive that is something that uh, I will probably make a video about that, uh, a comparison, uh, measuring like uh, the money to make a, fill, a full build uh, AMD versus Intel. And, and again, I will make a tutorial, uh, a full comparison, maybe a buying guide and, you know, uh, usual stuff. So uh, the point is, uh, this generation was not a total failure by me. Uh, some people say that it's useless, but well, the feature that I just mentioned, I think is enough uh, to have uh, again, uh, a very good competition in the mintage sector. So uh, if you are looking something that is between 150 or 300 uh, euro or dollars, uh, those two must be taken into consideration if you are looking uh, to upgrade your build uh, because you don't want to wait uh, until the new socket come in both for AMD and Intel. And uh, well, you want uh, a setup that is not uh, super expensive, but uh, you will be able to play your games uh, without uh, any issue at all. All right, so in the next few days, I will try to 
do some guides and tutorial, even some gameplay to show you uh, the real effect on the memory timing, the memory setup uh, while gaming, something that uh, the charts doesn't tell you. I want to show you exactly uh, if you go with one configuration or another, uh, what is the, the real impact uh, about that choice. If you want to invest the time uh, to uh, overclock the memory, to tune the memory and the to see the real benefit, the real impact uh, of your choice of investment in time to make this. And you can decide if it's worth or not. And then I have a, a very interesting project going on. Uh, it's going for about some week now, but uh, uh, you will see that it will be very interesting. It's about memory, overclocking, and stability in relation of temperature. Trust me, that is something that you don't want to miss. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next one.